Number 33. The density, D, of a substance is an intensive property that is defined by the ratio of its mass, M, to its volume, V. So density equals mass divided by volume or shortened to D equals M over V. That's a really important formula to memorize, by the way. Considering that mass and volume are both extensive properties, explain why their ratio, density, is intensive. Okay. So we went into depth about extensive properties and intensive properties in the last couple of questions. So go back if you really need a, a, you know, a real rundown. But just for here, just know that extensive properties will always change depending on matter. And matter is just a fancy way of saying how much space something is taking up. So mass and volume are both extensive properties because it depends on how much space it is. If you have more mass, chances are, 100% of the time, you have more matter. So you could have a lot of mass, you could have a little bit of mass for a single substance, right? You could have a lot of water, you could have a little bit amount of water. Same thing with volume, with that little amount of Mass will come a little volume. So you could have a little bit and you could have a lot. So I'll just write over here, you have a lot or you could have a little. For that certain substance, whether it's a compound, an element, you name it, mass and volume are both extensive properties. But intensive properties, they do not change depending on matter. Do not change on matter. So it doesn't matter, see what I did there? (laughs) It does not matter um, how much you have. These are basically standard numbers for any given um, compound element. So density is a standard, right? The density of water will always be one gram per centimeter cubed. The melting point of something, a substance that melts at one specific temperature, a boiling point will boil at, a substance will boil at one specific temperature. So they're all standard numbers, but anything that can change are extensive. But now let's see why, if we put together two extensive properties, we get an intensive property. So let's do a nice little drawing here of, look at that, that's nice of my substance A. And I'm just gonna give random numbers here, no rhyme or reason, but it's gotta have a mass and it's gotta have a volume. So mass and a volume. So let's just say that this mass, I don't know, we weighed substance A and we get six grams. And when we took the volume of it, let's just say that it was three mils. Okay, so we got a mass, we got a volume. We could definitely find out its density. Because remember, density, just like up here, D equals M over V. Density equals mass over volume. So I have my mass, which is 6 grams, divided by my volume, which is 3 mils. And 6 divided by 3 is 2. Grams and mils cannot cancel out, so therefore the unit in this case would be grams per mil. So my density for this substance is 2 grams per mil. Now, I'm going to take the same substance and I'm going to cut it in half. So I I don't want all of this, but I'm going to take half of the matter that there is here and throw it away. (laughs) So you're left with basically something like this, which is now called A. But as you can see, all I did was I halved my substance. And what's the mathematical way of saying halved? Oh, well, I just divided by two. So with that, I have less matter. By how much? Well, by half, by dividing by two. So I have to take my mass and I have to divide by two. So my new mass would be not the six grams, but I have to divide by two. So now I have three grams as this mass. And the same thing with the volume, because volume is extensive. So my new volume would not be three mils. It would be 
divided by 2, which is 1.5 ml. Or you could have kept it as 3 over 2. It does not matter. But now those are my two new mass values and volume values. So from here, we could find a density. Because density equals mass over volume. The mass here would be 3 grams divided by 1.5 mils. If you did 3 divided by 1.5, you would get 2 grams per mil. Say what? Look at that. I get the same number. I get 2 grams per mils for a larger amount of mass and volume, but I get the same amount, same density, for the same substance that has less. That's why it's intensive. It does not matter what your mass and your volume is, you will still get that same standard amount. Now the cool thing is, is that I'll put it over here, any ratio, and a ratio, just know, is just something divided by something else. So whether it's, in this case, grams per mil. But there's a lot of ratios in chemistry that we'll see throughout the chapters. But just know that any ratio of extensive properties, I'm just going to put extensive property, P, are intensive. So if you take two extensive properties and you divide them, you will get an intensive property, a standard number. So just to recap, the reason why this was an intensive property density is because whatever your mass and volumes were, you have to half both of them or times by two. Now that's a little quiz for you. Take the same mass as your original. I'm going to put this as original. And instead of halving it, make it two times larger. So times by two for your mass and your volume and see what the density turns out to be. I can guarantee you that it's going to be two grams per mils for this example. All right. So I hope this helped guys. I hope you understand the difference now between extensive properties and intensive properties. Um, but yeah, thank you for, you know, coming here and click that subscribe button if it helped you out, because we'll be giving you tons more answers as the chapters progress. So FOMO, you don't want to be missing out. I will see you all in the next lesson. See you guys.